just uh, showing you the Hero Clicks Team World Championship qualifiers. This is Scott from WizKids Games, and uh, we are in the final round of the first day of qualifiers for this. And on our feature match table is Patricia Lamb from Department H, uh, coming down from Canada, and Alan M uh, from the Casey Nix team. So they are our featured round for this, and uh, I am just going to say right now, I very much apologize for our technical difficulties that did not allow us to give you round two. Uh, we uh, hope you appreciated seeing the uh, Dice Masters uh, game that, that we were able to get in. But, uh, but we are back on Hero Clicks now, and uh, they are just about to get started. We have uh, Patricia with a uh, team that consists of uh, Lex Luthor, uh, DEO Agent, and uh, also Black Orchid. Uh, this is uh, all figures from the uh, Justice League Trinity War set. And uh, Alan is playing the uh, Black Widow, the uh, 001 uh, figure from uh, uh, Avengers Assembled, and uh, uh, Aquaman, and Master Pandemonium. So they've placed their objects. They are just about to get started. We are coming in to you here from the Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. It's been a beautiful day here. Uh, we've all been enjoying some, some hero clicks. We've all been enjoying the hospitality of Columbus, Ohio and the uh, Gamma uh, Association who hosts this event. Just a reminder for any of you who may uh, just be tuning into this or uh, coming back to us. This is the Team Worlds Championship Qualifiers. So uh, Patricia and Alan are part of a three-person team. Uh, their other teammates are playing at different tables. And uh, each of these teams at the start of the event had six booster packs, three Avengers Assembled boosters, and three Justice League Trinity War boosters to uh, build their teams from and uh, then they split those uh, tried to build 300 point teams uh, from those six booster packs they then assign uh, players as an a b and c player and those a b and c players through the different rounds get matched up against the a b and c players of the other teams and uh, so there's a lot of strategy involved in terms of who, uh, what teams you're going to build first off, but who's going to play those teams, uh, where you're going to position your players in terms of who's the A player, B player, C player, and uh, and uh, hoping you get some good matchups. So, well, they just started up here. Uh, Patricia is uh, the the first player, won the map role. She chose uh, one of the maps from uh, the AVX storyline organized play, and has moved her team up. Uh, not fully, but, uh, you know, just a little cautiously uh, moving up the map. And uh, Alan has Master Pandemonium. Master Pandemonium has an ability that allows him, uh, well, in the comics, his arms come off uh, into form uh, little small demons. And uh, they're nasty little buggers. Uh, they have, uh, they are uh, pogs that are on the back of his card, so he's using special... Uh, markers to indicate that that these are these uh, arm demonic arm tokens and uh, the stats that they have it's a 10 attack uh, 10 speed value with phasing an 11 attack with poison they only have a 15 defense with no defensive powers but they uh, they do one damage with exploit weakness and they have the mystics team ability so uh, a lot of potential to do some damage with those he can send them out uh, to uh, to fight for him, but 
the downside is that when one of them gets knocked out, he's got to roll, and if he gets a 1, 2, or 3, Master Pandemonium is going to take one avoidable damage. So uh, a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, a gamble there, but can certainly be worth it to, uh, to ping someone with some poison or hit them with exploit weakness or even just to tie someone up. So Patricia is moving up uh, Black Orchid. And, uh, and then taking Lex Luthor and carrying the DEO agent, kind of m circling around where, uh, where Alan had moved his, his demonic arms. So Alan's going to have to chase her down a little bit there. I think she's, she's going to try to sneak around the side there to get to, to his team. Alan's uh, counting out. Uh, they've got a pretty good movement there with the 10 phasing, so he, he can get right up to him. Oh, yeah, he's going to place him right, one of those arms right in there to try to lock those folks down. And uh, it looks like he's considering putting the second one right there, too, as well. There, there it goes. And so it's a dangerous position there. You know, as a player, you look at that and go, oh boy, I've got to waste an action, potentially push someone to, to avoid taking the mystics damage. Uh, I'm sorry, the poison damage, or even uh, if they were going to attack. Looks like Alan's considering his options of where he might move his team. Of course, counting out uh, where Patricia's movement is going to be and how far she can get. All right, so he's going to take his Aquaman. Uh, Aquaman is a transporter, so he can carry Black Widow. Alright, here goes our first attack roll of the game. Ooh, a three. Uh, that might not do it for the, it's only a 15 defense, but a uh, low roll like that might not do it. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And she's got to try again. Six does it. All right. So it takes that one out. But uh, there's still one threat there with the last amount of arm. He's rolling for his damage for Master Pandemonium, but uh, takes no damage. Lex Luthor. She's uh, taking a look at Lex Luthor's card, and uh, Lex Luthor is uh, an interesting uh, figure in the uh, in the set. He has um, some subterfuge tokens, and those subterfuge tokens uh, on his card, when he has them, uh, an opposing character can only target him if they begin the turn adjacent. So, uh, no one can take range attacks against him while he's got that subterfuge token. Uh, but when he targets someone, then it will go away. He also has leadership and outwit uh, as a special power. And uh, if he succeeds at, at leadership, he can uh, remove a, an action token from a friend, the character, with the injustice keyword. But uh, that's not really going to affects uh, affect her team in, in this particular game.
All right, tries to break away, but doesn't do it. So she's going to pull Black Orchid and the EO agent. So it goes over to Alan, and uh, he's, he's got her pretty pretty well locked down right now with that, uh, that one demonic arm. So he's going to go ahead and make the attack. Uh, it's looking like a 6 and a 5, so 11 uh, to just ping Lex Luthor for 1 um, with the exploit weakness, but well worth it. other figures. It's looking like he's staying put, uh, but uh, Patricia rolls for the leadership on Lex Luthor and as much as I said that uh, Lex Luthor's uh, leadership power wouldn't be effective this game, well, Patricia's a better player than I am because uh, she, of course, realized that Lex Luthor can target himself with it. So she removed her own action token. Marked out with the die on the map where she's thinking of moving, but uh, just the way she's looking at the map there, I am guessing that she is counting out the, uh, the movement of Alan's team and where, what his threat range is and where he might be able to go. Just considering all the options before committing to the move. have one more team qualifier uh, going on tomorrow before we cut to the uh, each qualifier uh, the top eight advances to the final round uh, the actual team world championship seeding round to round in this uh, team world qualifier is uh, based on the uh, uh, cumulative uh, win-loss record of your team so oh Patricia is trying to get rid of that one demonic arm, but rolling a four, and now it looks like she is okay. Every player's been in this position. After you roll a three and a four, you change out your dice. We all know that feeling. So, looks like she's gonna pick up a new pair of dice, some red dice. Hopefully, they're gonna be a better luck for. Tries to break away, but again, uh, rolls a three on it, doesn't make it. So that demonic arm has now locked up her team for uh, two, two full turns here and, uh, and, and even caused some damage, uh, Ping Lex Luthor, with the exploit weakness last turn. Just going to go ahead and clear and see if he can 
milk that demonic arm for as much as it can do. Uh, rolls leadership. Patricia on her turn. First thing being the turn rolls for leadership gets a one, so does not get it. Uh, unfortunately, Lexi's going to have to stay with that action token. So going for the breakaway and gets it finally. Okay, so now she can move out of the threat range of this uh, demonic arm. And just counting out spaces considering her options. Alright, so she's going to carry the DEO agent, uh, place him behind some blocking terrain. Lex himself is actually going to go on a square of hindering terrain, which will help his defense against range attacks. Um, He should be pretty safe with his subterfuge token on him anyways. And uh, she's got Black Orchid who is carrying a heavy object who's going <coughs> to circle around the other way here. And clears the DEO agent. that they've broken away from that demonic arm. Uh, Alan is taking a look at if he wants to engage or not. I'm going to guess that we're going to see that demonic arm coming right back up uh, right next to one of the figures for Patricia's team. As I mentioned before, Aquaman is a transporter, so he does have a pretty wide threat range being able to use the move and attack ability. You may notice on this map that there's uh, the crater areas outlined in red. Uh, one thing to point out that those are actually <coughs> lower elevations. They are craters indicated by the one uh, that's inside them. So uh, conceptually, if you're looking at here, uh, essentially uh, Black Orchid is sort of down in a hole uh, as well as Master Pandemonium as well in his own little crater there. And uh, Aquaman and Black Widow are also down in the little hole, so uh, there's a lot of protection there. It might look like it's a pretty open map, but, uh, but there are those multiple elevations.
So Nellen moves uh, moves now five squares with Master Pandemonium. Uh, takes him out of that little crater. So now he's going to have a, a clear line of fire, not only to Lex Luthor, but also the DEO agent. The Lex Luthor still has his subterfuge token, so he won't be able to get targeted. But uh, oh, looks like Alan's going to move right in there with. Uh, with Aquaman with his move and attack ability from being a transporter and go for the attack. Uh, it is at a, a lower attack value, but if it rolls an 8, that's pretty good. Um, we see now why uh, Alan had moved Master Pandemonium over as well. Let's see about getting some support for Aquaman, and then he's going to move right in there. So. Well, my guess of him taking one of his actions to move the demonic arm was wrong. But uh, he's instead going right at him, uh, at Patricia, with uh, his main main figures there. So... over to Patricia. She, uh, she rolls a 6 on leadership, but uh, Alan makes her re-roll that with probability control, and instead she gets the 1, so Alan's going to want to try to make sure Patricia keeps that token on, uh, on Lex Luthor. So Black Widow, I mean uh, Black Orchid, excuse me, is going to charge in with the heavy object, and she's going for the attack roll here, rolling a six, and it's a push to do it. She's going to take a click of damage, loses that object, but unfortunately that attack did not stick. Gonna go for the attack uh, with the DEO agent on Aquaman. Uh, gets a seven, and that attack will not hit. And Lex Luthor clears. over to Allen's turn. He's uh, looking at the current state of the board, considering his options. He's got uh, all his figures with tokens on them. But uh, Black Widow does have Indomitable. attack. Rolling a seven. Uh, that, that'll do it. So Lex Luthor takes some damage on that. Uh, Black Widow is going to take a second token, but because uh, she has an indomitable, will not take any pushing damage. Trying to press the advantage there, uh, he's going to go ahead and 
take the gamble, make the attack with Aquaman. Uh, it is going to mean that Aquaman is going to take some pushing damage, but he did was successful with the attack, so well worth it. As sneaky as Lex Luthor is with his subterfuge tokens, uh, he has not been able to avoid that damage. He's been hit three times already in this game. So now we're going to see Alan moving in his demonic arm. Doesn't see that he needs to push Master Pandemonium. Might as well just have his arms do the work for him. He's going to place that right next to Lex Luthor, so he is definitely putting a big target on Lex Luthor this game. So, goes back over to Patricia. She's uh, rolling for her leadership. She decides to take the token off of Black Orchid, so that Black Orchid can go ahead and make an attack. She did have two tokens on her before, but now she can make an attack this turn. Uh, but she's going to start off with, uh, with Lex Luthor. Rolling a 10, which is a great roll there. It is doubles. Uh, oh, those, wow. Max out. Out Aquaman. I should have uh, mentioned before, in case you're wondering why Aquaman went uh, went down so quickly there. Uh, I believe he was playing at the lower point value. Aquaman can be played either at 172 points or 60 points. Uh, he was being played at the 60 point, uh, 60 point starting line. So clears DEO agent. It goes back over to Allen. He's lost a figure, but he has been able to lay in a lot of damage on Lex Luthor so far. Looks like Master Pandemonium is going to not only have his arms do some work, but he's going to get into the battle himself. So Master Pandemonium comes around to the, to the side there. And is going to take a shot on the DEO agent. Uh, Master Pandemonium does start with running shot, so he's able to move up to half his speed value, take a shot, and uh, knocks out that DEO agent. And Black Widow is going to clear. Patricia on her turn, she's going to roll that leadership, gets the six, and now is Alan going to make her re-roll that or not? No, nope. he lets it go through, he's going to save it for the attack roll. Uh, Master, Master Pandemonium has probability control, so uh, he has an opportunity to make her re-roll the roll. That was a quick turn there, uh, pass it back over. Excuse me, that wasn't the end of her turn. Um, all right, so destroys that one square blocking terrain and clears Black Orchid.
Black Widow makes an attack uh, on Lex Luthor. to retaliate. He's going to go ahead and make that attack roll. Looks like he's rolling an 8. So more damage in on Lex Luthor. Uh, call the probability control on that. attack against Black Widow. Black Widow has shape change, so that's why you saw Alan roll that, but he got the one, so uh, did not make it. And uh, he tried. She also, uh, uh, the attack roll was successful. She was able to evade the attack with her super sensing. So currently right now we've got uh, Black Widow and Master Pandemonium undamaged and uh, Patricia with Lex Luthor and Black Orchid. Lex Luthor's uh, taken a bunch of damage so far and uh, Black Orchid's Already pushed uh, at least one time. So Alan's gonna make his attack here. Rolls a ten. He's been rolling pretty well there with the attacks. Uh, he's gonna. It's making that attack with Black Widow, who again has uh, Indomitable, so she's uh, attacking that second turn in a row, not taking any pushing damage. And now Alan's going to come right up close with uh, Master Pandemonium. Luther and that takes him out of the game. That was a push on Mass Pandemonium to do it. 
but certainly would be happy as a player to take one pushing damage and not configure out. And uh, he's going to go for the follow-up attack. Oh, dice off the table there, but it was a one, so he's, he's actually pretty happy about that. Uh, rolls it for a nine with uh, Black Widow attacking, and that'll be the game. So Allen from Casey Nix wins this round uh, versus Patricia from Department H. Uh, he made good use of the demonic arms from Master Pandemonium, which was able to lock down Patricia's team for a couple turns. And uh, Patricia had a, had a rough time with uh, Roland for breaking away and, and even uh, missing one shot uh, against the uh, demonic arm with only the 15 defense. So, so a couple of couple of rough rolls right in the beginning. Uh, her, uh, one of her teammates, Rob, is coming over uh, to, to talk it through. And uh, we've got Alan's teammates coming over as well. I'm sure they're comparing notes how their games went as uh, this is the, the final round of the qualifiers. So they're filling out their team sheets. And then at this point, we're going to calculate all, of the, all the scores and the records of all of the teams that had played to see what top eight, what eight teams will qualify to move on to move on to the final round in the actual team world championships. And that game there will conclude our uh, broadcast.